Hello. Hi, everyone. It's Tracy with Tierra Cast here um, with the Great Bead Extravaganza Tucson version 2022. And um, I'm super happy to be here. I hope you guys have been enjoying the demonstrations so far. Um, I know that Kay with Stars Beads was just up. Didn't see any of it. It's it's wonderful to be a participant in this, but you can't watch. You can't always watch all of the uh, all of the de all the pre presentations. So I hope that you guys have been enjoying it, and I hope that um, K's went well. Sometimes there's technical snafus, no fun, but hopefully K's went well. And um, I'm gonna give us just a couple of minutes to hi from sunny Mobile, Alabama. I know Emily that that. Uh, when I'm using StreamYard, it doesn't tell me your name, but I know that greeting. So that's Emily. Um, I'm going to take a minute and share this to the Tierra Cast Facebook page. So give me just a sec. And it'll give people some time to find the um, live stream too. Sometimes, even if you've been watching the whole um, time, it, the most recent one just won't pop up. So hold on just a second. I'm here, just gonna see if I can pop this over to the Tierra Cast Facebook page. I hope that it will be doable easily and not take up too much time. Um, I do think that, I do hope that you guys will enjoy our, uh, my presentation today. If any of you are fans of Tierra Cast, Hold on, we are live with, with day two of the T Great Beat Extravaganza All right, that ought to do it. Um don't even remember. Oh, I was saying <laughs> that um hopefully. Um, if you uh, are a fan of TRCast, you may know that we just launched a new product um, collection called Wild West. So that's what our, um, my demonstration is the three new kits that, um, that we launched with this collection. And as I promised on the preview, um, we are going to, I am going to do a giveaway, one each of the kits. So originally, Sometimes I like to do it live while we're actually streaming, but it's also nice to be able to include the people who can't watch it live and have to catch it later. So I am going to hope, just know that I'm going to be giving away one of each of these kits and that I will choose a name from the viewers, but I'm not going to do that until I'm back from my vacation in two weeks. So. You're going to have to wait. I'm actually leaving for Costa Rica tonight, which is pretty darned exciting. Um, and I won't be back in the office until March 7th. And at that time, I will go back to the video. All you have to do to enter for the giveaway is um, comment in the video. And what I'll do is I'll go through each section. I'll be demonstrating all three of these kits. I'm going to go through um, that segment of the video and randomly choose a name. And then I'll announce them in um, the Great Beat Extravaganza group and also the Great Beat Extra Extravaganza page. You guys should, you've probably been hearing it now. This is the second day that there's also an official Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook business page. So um, it's just another, another way to um, reach you guys and to be able to share our content in addition to what we put in the private group. And it encourages people to join the private group. So um all of that yes i'm gonna have so much fun guys um i'm really looking forward to this and i'm not frantically packing while i'm also trying to frantically get ready for this live stream either i just you know i'm fine so <laughs> i'm gonna i'm going to um oh, very interested in beating but a bit intimidated by it if you mean there's a there's a commenter if you mean this type of seed bead fringe that's the first one I'm going to demonstrate, and um, you will be pleasantly surprised how easy it is. So let me switch my camera to the desktop view. 
there we go. There's the three kits. Um, also the three giveaways. So we're going to do the beaded concho earrings. That's first because that one is the most involved and I want to make sure we can get through it with plenty of time and our, 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 <laughs> that was a little bit of a tongue twister. And then the rattlesnake bracelet and then these longhorn fringe earrings. They are all simple, simple, um, projects. So let's get going on them. I'm going to swap out my tray here. So these do come in kits, um, as, as you know by now, because that's what I've been talking about. They also are just available as a downloadable project on our website. So if you don't, have you never been to the tiaracast.com website? Um, okay, let me back up for just a second. Um, I sometimes assume everybody knows about TiaraCast. TiaraCast is a wholesale jewelry component manufacturer. We cast in lead-free pewter. Uh, we are in Northern California and are in our 40, 43rd year of business. Um, we sell wholesale to bead suppliers like your fellow TGBE vendors. So when you're shopping for our products, that's where you go. You go to your retail source, unless you're a wholesale customer, and then that's a different story. Um, but our website is, a, you can download projects off of the website. It's available to the public. Um, and these projects are all, all have downloadable part sheets and instructions. So you don't need to go find a kit. If you want to buy your pieces separately, your part separately and you have other seed beads that you want to use, you can do that. So um, to get started on this project and what I, this pair of earrings uses is our new concho posts, um, a what we call our hammer tone rings. We have a whole series of these in different sizes and they're, they've been in our collection for a very long time. They're very popular. We're using one of those. I think it's five eighths of an inch is how we list it on the website. I'm not quite sure. Um, we're using some tiny little Tierra cast faceted spacers. These are have also, if I can get one where you can see it. These have also been in our um, product offerings for a very long time and are very popular. Just a little like three millimeter faceted spacer. And we're using some size eight seed beads. And then we'll use a jump ring to tack it, uh, to connect the ring and the ear earring finding. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have a four foot piece of, I'm using some wildfire beading cord. You could use Fireline, you can use, um, you can use any beading thread that you prefer. I happen to like the braided or bonded like um, Fireline or wildfire because I'm a slow, I'm, a, I'm not a great seed beater. And sometimes I split my thread or I tangle so the fire line and wildfire works for me. You can use whatever you want. Um, a lot of people like to match their threads when they're doing work like this. They like to match their threads to their um, to their seed bead color. So um, I have my four foot piece of thread. I have it tied to the hammer tone ring in a, just a double knot, nice and snug. And the first thing I'm going to do, and I didn't set these up very neatly, but you know, we'll get through it. The first thing I'm gonna do is pick up two of these faceted beads and bring them up. I have a, I didn't really get through the what you need list very for it thoroughly. I also need a beading needle, of course. This one is what you call a big eye needle. Those are my favorite just because they're easy to, um, super easy to thread. So, and if you buy a kit, um, the, um, sorry, losing track of thoughts. If you buy a kit, the needle is included. So I've strung on two of the faceted spacers. I'm going to bring my needle up behind I'm going to move this stuff out of the way a little bit so that there's not uh, there's not stuff underneath where I'm working because that can get kind of confusing. I'm going to bring my needle up behind the ring, and I've got. Sorry, guys, I got to. You have to be careful when you're seat beating to keep your tools out of reach, otherwise your thread can get tangled on your tools, and or anything else that's 
hand, that's nearby. All right, so I'm bringing my needle through the ring and back up. And then I'm gonna come up, you can see those two beads are sitting right there. I'm gonna bring my needle through the, the second one and aiming away from the ring. I'm gonna keep my little tail out of the way that we tied on earlier. and pull those down close to the ring. So you can see that now they sit right next to each other. I'm actually gonna get myself some of these little faceted spacer beads separately. Know that all of the, um, that the kit contains plenty of these. They're small beads and they can, you can easily drop them, but the kit contains plenty of them so that you don't run out because you've lost one. Um, so now I, I picked up another one of those faceted beads and I did the same thing. I brought my needle behind and then up through the bead and um, tucked it right up next to the other one. And now I'm getting my needle tangled. I can also see, I don't know if you can see this. It's looking fine. So I've got my third bead. I'm gonna just continue doing that until I have seven beads across. This one will take us the longest, this demo. It should take us at least a half of our demo, but the other ones are very quick, so we should be, get, be able to get through it just fine. So I'm just gonna repeat that. Pick up a seed bead. This is called brick stitch, this technique. And it's not complicated once you get started. Oh, hey, I, I see that Softlex has put a post in the comments. There are a couple of um, my fellow TGBE vendors that are selling these kits, Allegory Gallery and and beadshop.com. I'm not sure if anybody else um, had picked them up for the show, but you should be able to find them at Allegory Gallery or beadshop.com. And so you can see this can go pretty easily once you get the, get the hang of it. Um, I was going to say earlier, and then I'm like, and then I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't mention it. These trays of um, supplies have been sitting in my office for a few days, and the sil our silver components are are plated with fine silver, which tarnishes. Right? If you're working with silver stuff, you always got to have a, um, a a polishing cloth nearby. And so I'm seeing that these guys are like. They need a little love with the polishing cloth because they've been sitting out. They've been sitting out on the on the tray for like a week. So I'm just going to give them a little love because I can't stand to look at that. And I wasn't going to mention it, but you know, if I can see it, you guys can see it, right? So um, you know, that's a whole topic of how to care for your silver jewelry. Um, we do have on the Tierra Cast website. There's a blog section. And the section that section has um, a blog post that um, talks about how to care for silver jewelry and other finishes. All right, so I have all seven of my base because my earring fringe has seven strands, right? So I've got all seven of my faceted spacers on there. And now I'm just gonna start adding beads and following the patterns that I have set up here. And if I had been smart, I would have separated my beads into the colors and so that they're easier to pick up, but you know, it'll be fine. So for that first strand, I want a terracotta. I want a spacer bead. I want three of the kind of off-white cream colored beads, another spacer, and then I want five of the turquoise beads and one last spacer. And I'm going to bring those all, all down to 
uh, someone's commenting that brick stitch is her latest addiction. It can really be, once you get the hang of it, it can be super relaxing. You know, you just are very focused. You, um, I'm sorry, I get talking and then I forget to tell you guys what I'm doing. I got my beads on. I have that final spacer. Now I'm going to go back through that whole strand of beads, but I'm skipping that last spacer. And that's what will keep keep that strand in place. So I've brought that needle all the way up, including through that first that first uh, faceted bead. And then I'm just going to pull that all the way up through. And I want to pull it tight, but I don't want it to be um, so tight that the kind of the beads kind of crimp up and, and get too tight next to each other. I want there to be, I want them to be able to sit next to each other in a relaxed fashion. So I'm all the way up at the, came through that first spacer bead, and now I'm just going to go down through the next one. And I will try to look over and see comments here and there, guys. Um, but but I won't catch them all. And so if you have questions, you can always send uh, a message to the Tierra Cast Facebook page. And again, I'm going on vacation, so I won't get back to you very soon. But I will get back to you if you send a message to the Tierra Cast Facebook page. All right. So now I'm doing the next strand. I need two of the terracottas one of the uh, faceted spacers, three of the cream colored, another faceted, and five, four, five, and one more of the, of the faceted. And I am just going to repeat that process all the way across. And I should point out, too, that in the kit... Um, there are enough of these seed beads so that you could adjust the pattern. Again, coming up through that first faceted bead, you could adjust the pattern to make these longer if you wanted to. And that is that is an option. You would you could just add um, more beads to any of these. Like for example, what if I put five of the cream colored and like seven of the um, of the turquoise, you know, they'd be a little bit longer and that could be fun. So um, you do want to kind of groom each time you get a little strand put on, you kind of want to groom it. Like I showed you that first time you want to make sure that all the slack is taken up, but you also want to make sure it's not too tight. You want all the beads to be sitting up against, up against the ring. So you don't want to end up with like naked, naked string. So the next row has three of the faceted, three of the, three of the terracotta, one faceted, three of the cream colored, one faceted, and again, five. It's an easy pattern. Again, five of the tur turquoise. Someone's commenting, I pick up the seed beads fast. I do, <laughs> I do uh, do that. So you, if somebody's starting, goodness sakes, just be patient with yourself and give yourself time. Um, when we're coming back up through this, this row of beads, you do need to make sure that you don't accidentally skip a bead and um, end up with the thread on the outside. That's something to watch out for. Make sure that you don't miss any beads. And you can see how it's coming together. It goes pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. And you'll see, I mean, this type of work, the seed bead fringe work, you can just see some amazing samples of this kind of work, amazing patterns. People make just gorgeous ones with size 11 beads that are just big, beautiful, flowing things. Just amazing. This is a pretty simple and beginner friendly. Five.
and final faceted. And this is the center one. So after this one, I'm going to start reducing the terracotta beads again. I got up through all my beads. I didn't miss any. Up through the faceted. Excuse the Band-Aid. That's, you know, was just an unfortunate bread knife accident this morning. But, you know, <laughs> thank God for Band-Aids. Bread knives can be pretty lethal. Do you make the silver space beads? We sure do. These are three millimeter faceted um, spatial beads. Let's see, where are we? I need three of the terracottas. We also make them in um, a couple other, we have a larger one that's five millimeter, same, same kind of design. This faceted with a tiny little beaded accent in the center. It's a five millimeter. And we also have the larger size in a large hole. It's, it's a two millimeter hole, so it's great for working with, um, I'm going to need a few more of these. It's great for working with cords, like leather cords. Can't be a beater without a Band-Aid. <laughs> I have, so, Shelly's commenting that, yeah, if you're a beater, you need Band-Aids. Um, I have certainly had my share of needle pokes that draw blood. And when I was first starting, this may be just TMI, but when I was first starting and not really knowing how to do it, I constantly was sticking my needle between my teeth to hold on to it. And so I, I would get like pokes in my tongue. I'm like, okay, this is not something you should do. Now I use a magnet. When I need to set my needle aside, I use a magnet. So if you're coming in late, um, did I get through all the beads on that? I did. I want to see how everything's looking. If you're coming in late, do know that we're doing a giveaway. I'm going to give away one each of these kits, um, but it won't happen until I'm back from vacation. I'm on going away for two weeks. When I'm back, I will go into the video and choose some names randomly to uh, win some of these kits. So it's something to look forward to. E4, five, Last spacer. Yeah, I like keeping, Susan, I like keeping a little magnet on my, um, on my, uh, if I'm doing, working with seed beads because otherwise I am losing needles left and right. Come on now. They're looking pretty good, I think. This is our last row. Oops. Got wrapped around some of the fringe. So one terracotta, one faceted. One, two, three. So you can see here as I'm hunting for bead colors, when you're working on this, it really is kind of, on something like this, it really is worth it to um, sort your beads and, um, and organize them. I'm noticing that this is a little bit loose, this second strand. So I can fix that by just pulling on my thread on the strand I'm actually working on and just pulling on it and take it pulls up the slack in the thread next to it, if that makes sense. So I'm glad I caught that before we finished because that would have bugged me to have that a little bit too long, too uh, loose. Um, what I was saying is that it's really worth your time to sort your beads so that you can get right to the color you want. 
this is one of those cases of do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> I mean, it's not a big deal, but certainly a little more efficient if your beads are sorted by color, especially if you're working on a complicated pattern. You know what I, re oh, these are size eight seed beads. Um, oh, look what I did. That was silly. I had already added the beads and I added them again because I was talking and got distracted. So here's how I'm going to get those off. I'm just going to thread my way back up through the ones I don't want, including, you know, on the rest of them, when we thread back up through the strand, we skip the bottom one. But in this time, I'm including the bottom one. That way, when I when I pull the thread through, all of those beads just fall off. All right. So once again, skip that bottom one and go up through the rest of them. And don't miss any. And I'm pretty sure that in the up in the description of the video, I included links. Uh, the URLs for these projects on our website so that you can go in and find those. What color is my beading line? It's just the frost. It's the um, fire line calls it frost. Um, just white. That That is what um, I like to use with our silver. You know, depending on what I'm using, I might choose the black. And some of them come in multiple colors. And again, any thread is fine with this. You can... Um, use one of the nylon beading threads that come in a million colors and um, and choose a color that matches your beads or whatever works. Um, let's see. So I am at the end of the fringe. I have to flip the page over and remind myself how to finish this off. Um, I think all I need to do is I can remove, well, no, I don't want to remove my needle. How did I do this? I think what I did, because I've got two tails to deal with here. So I think all I'm going to do with this one is just thread underneath. And there's instructions on the downloadable. It'll walk you through this. It's just been so long since I did it, I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. I'm threading my needle under that last little bit of, or that first, or this is actually the original um, loop around the ring. I am getting my tail out of the way. So I threaded the needle underneath that little bit of thread. I've got a loop here. I'm going to thread the needle through that loop. So it's just what you call a little half hitch knot. And then I'm going to tighten that down. And then I'm going to take the needle and thread it right back down through those beads. all the way to the bottom. It doesn't have to be all the way to the bottom, but it feels tidy that way. I'm just, I'm threading it down. So it's got a little knot in there. So that needle, will, or that thread will be secure. And then I'm gonna take my snippers and just cut that off. And then to finish, to deal with the tail, I'm kind of gonna do the same thing. There's already a knot. So all I need to do is thread that tail onto the needle. And this time I'm going to go down the adjacent, the next um, strand of beads. And again, you don't want to you don't want to miss a bead because you don't want that that thread showing on the outside of the beads. That would be yeah, accidents happen. I've certainly ended up with finished projects where that had happened. So. <laughs> So again, I threaded that needle all the way down and I'm just trimming it off at the bottom. So then the fringe is done. So that was not hard, right, guys? Um, it is definitely something that is beginner friendly. So if you have not done this before, um, you should try it. Don't be afraid. The last... Uh, the last thing I need to do with this design is to, I've what I've got here is one of our oval jump rings. It's already open. It's our largest one. Um, and I like, I was 
I wanted to use the larger one, so I had a little bit of clearance between the ring and the loop of the earring finding. So I'm just attaching the earring post, and you could use uh, ear wires here. You could use whatever you wanted. The earring post is what's is what's uh, included in the kit, which is you know the earring post is one of the items from our um, our new launch. And it's based on traditional silver work. So it's like a concho pattern and um, fit the theme really nicely. And so far they're really popular. People are loving them and snapping them up. So let's see. Yes, true, Donna, you can do that too. Um, and But because I wanted to just be able to re reduce the number of times I went around this, I just thought, yeah, I'll just thread it down the next one. I could have actually woven it through and threaded it down the other, the, the last, um, the last strand on the other side, but I was going for simplicity. So here we go. These are the beaded concho earrings and they are beginner friendly and very fun. And remember there's enough seed beads in the kit um, that you can make these longer if you wanted. You could, I wonder if there's enough where you could just repeat the pattern. I don't know if that would be doable anyway. There's enough in there to play with. That is the point. So that's it for the first one. Yay, that was the beaded concho earrings. Um, pretty fun design. Um, pretty easy to do. The next one I'm going to demonstrate is, this is our rattlesnake bracelet. Now, the um, this little rattlesnake link we love. P rattles uh, snakes period are not for everybody but um he's a pretty beautiful little piece and we like him a lot and we designed him carefully we wanted it to be a link not just a charm we wanted people to be able to string from both ends so that you could use it for for example as a bracelet focal so so that's our new little rattlesnake charm so we loved the idea of just a very simple little rustic um a little simple rustic leather bracelet. So I've got my rattlesnake charm. I've got um, what we call our Western button. We've got a few size six seed beads. So the earrings were size eight seed beads. If you're not all that familiar with seed beads, the, the earrings were slightly smaller, size eights. These are size six. And then, and again, we got them in the terracotta and the um, turquoise. And then these little beads are also part of our new collection. We're calling them our flower spacers, flower nugget spacers is I think what, what uh, we called those. And they have a nice big hole. It is, in theory, fits two millimeter cord, but you know how leather cord can really vary. And sometimes it's quite, it's quite thick. So, um, but these will fit a slender two millimeter cord up to what we're using for this design is a 1.5. And I have 24 inches of it, which I'm going to just cut in half because I need 12 inches of the cord per side. And I also, these um, little rattlesnake links are flat. When we produce them, they're flat. So I have given this a little bit of a curve. I used some bracelet bending pliers and I just I just curved it a little bit. I like to do that with long links so that they, if they're going into a bracelet, I like that it will kind of fit the curve. So, ooh, someone's commenting that they actually saw a uh, rattlesnake when they were in Tucson one year. And you know, it's one of those things, they won't bother you if you don't bother them, so. All right, so I've got one uh, six inch piece of cord and I'm folding it in half for no good reason. You don't need to. And I'm going to just thread that through one end of the snake link. And I'm gonna, I'm threading it through so I have about an inch and a half tail. And I'm going to wrap that around, making a little pretzel. I'm just kind of wrapping it around and then I'm threading it, the tail through the loop that I made. And I'm aiming, I want to thread it through. It's kind of easy to thread the tail th so it goes towards your focal. I'm threading it so it goes away from the focal. Um, 
This knot is easy. It's just a simple overhand knot, but it might take you some practice. Don't, don't worry. Cindy says she's not a fan of snakes, but she doesn't hold it against them. <laughs> I don't think there's, I don't think it's customary for them to just show up at gem shows, but I guess it could be possible. Oh, um, Darlene. Yes, absolutely. You can do um, different focals. Uh, we have, if you go to the TRCast website and look at our link section, or actually look at our browse, you know what, let me just throw a link in the website or in the comments for you. Uh, you can see our focal links is where I was going with that. Um, see, let me find that for you. There is a lot of other links you can do with this design. Oops, did it go? I'm not sure if it went. It did. Okay, so I just threw a link into the comments. Um, not sure if I did that once or twice, but there it is. Um, so yeah, you could definitely definitely explore with some different links and different themes. All right, so I've tied my little overhand knot. I am want that to be very tight. I want to adjust it so there's maybe a quarter of an inch. That's kind of up to you. It could be a little shorter. I like quarter of an inch. And again, want that really tight. And I'm not going to trim it yet. But what I am going to do when I'm all done is I'm going to come in and put a little bit of glue in each of those knots because I don't want them sliding around. So I've got the knot tied. Now I'm stringing on a little pattern of the size six beads and one of the, and one of the flower nugget spacers. And for this particular design, um, size six seed beads, uh, whole size can vary. Um, we do find that um, there are some brands of seed beads that have more consistent size holes and that will fit a 1.5 millimeter cord. But you do want to make sure if you're not working from the kit, and you are working with size beads that you have, size six beads that you have, you need to make sure the, the cord will fit the hole or the hole will fit the cord, whichever. All right, so after I got my little sequence of beads on, I tied another overhand knot. And then my closure is just the simple button and button loop. So on this side, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna string on my button and then I'm gonna double that cord back and secure that with another one of those um, those knots. So I again, I wrap my cord around and just tuck the end through to make a little pretzel and then tighten that as tight as I can. And you'll wanna like get it on there, tie your knot and then adjust for size, you know, make sure you're getting it the size you want it. And also again, I'm gonna come in afterwards and and um, put glue in these. All right, so that's that one. That's one side. I'm not going to trim that yet. I mean, I guess I can trim some of it because I don't need it to be that big. But I'm not going to do the final close trimming yet until um, until I'm done and have the size adjusted how I want it. And there's, if you're working with the kit, there's enough. This 24 inches of cord is enough to, you know, create quite a size variation. You might have a small wrist. You might have a larger wrist. There's enough cord to, um, you know, get what you need out of it. And then again, I'm just going to, wait a minute. I want the turquoise first, then the terracotta, then the nugget. Terracotta and turquoise. Slide those all down there. Suzanne is saying that this, this could be a, uni, a unisex bracelet. Definitely. I could see that. Sliding them all up there and then again tying another overhand knot to keep them all in place. 
This knot, you don't have to be, I don't need to put glue in this knot because it's um, it's not uh, that crucial. You're, you're tying it there to keep that in place, but it's not like, it's not like part of the structure where you need to make sure the button loop is um, not going to slide or the button is going to stay on. So I don't even need to put glue in these ones, but I will in these two and the two at the back. All right. So now here's where, of course, you'll be adjusting to the size you want and creating your button loop, kind of lining it up there. Maybe pull that in a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And that's where I will tie one more of those knots to make my button loop. The instructions that you can download on the website and also the instructions in the kit um, have a little diagram for that knot. So hopefully if it gets confusing, the little diagram will help. And before I finish and I trim and do all that stuff, I just want to check my size again, make sure the button's in a good place, make sure the button loops in a good place. And that feels good. So now I've got some, I've got some gel super glue. And I'm going to just put a little bit where all the bits of leather overlap in the knots. And I always recommend um, a little good ventilation when you're working with any glues. I did not think of that when I came in today. So this glue smelling really strong. Normally I would have a window open and a little fan running. But you know, didn't think of that. So I'm just making, I'm trying to tighten that one down again. Because it looked like it was a little bit loose. And um, you could use hypo cement for that. Um, hypo cement dries a little slower. I do like a gel super glue, seems to work pretty good. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what brand. So now I'm just going in and carefully, so I don't cut the wrong cord, I'm carefully trimming the tails off. My work mats are sliding all over the place. So that's it. That's it for the little snake. He's pretty cute. Even if you're not a snake person, you can't deny that that's a pretty cute little snake. And yes, super fast and super easy. And someone's commenting that this is a good stackable bracelet. Um, definitely. And imagine someone else was, we were talking about different focals you could use. You could just go crazy with colorways and different focals and could be really fun. So that was the rattlesnake bracelet. Our last demo is these are kind of favorites for me these are our longhorn fringe earrings um that's the kit they use our longhorn button one of the uh themes that we used in this um product launch is uh the longhorn very iconic kind of southwest i'm trying to get the light a little better on there but um we created a beautiful little longhorn charm and then we also decided to put it on this button with like some scroll work and some of the we wanted to repeat the flower motif from the little nugget bead so that's where that that button was born and i just love it i think it's gorgeous and then it's got this design also has those little flower spaces again flower spacers again so what I'm using for this is a piece of, this is deer skin lace, and it's, it's similar to a suede lace, but it's usually quite a bit thinner. Um, 
which means that we could get it through these little these little uh, flower spacers. If I was using a traditional suede, it would be too thick. So this is a deerskin lace. It's quite soft. It's quite flexible. It's got a nice smooth um, surface on one side. Um, perfect earrings for a Texas Longhorn fan. Is that a Angela? Is that a a, um, a college team? Because yeah, you could make some jewelry. That would be fun. So let's see. Um, I have a 18 inch piece of deer skin lace. Um, that is long enough for one earring. I have the button, I have the four spacers, and I have two large round jump rings. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut this 16 inch piece into two eight inch pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. One of the things that you need to do before you string on your spacer beads at the end of the process is cut the ends of these at quite sharp angles, kind of as sharp as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, even though I might end up trimming later. Still done. Kits, Tony is saying she's uh, making baskets for, um, looks like Easter basket, oh, Mother's Day baskets. And that throwing these jewelry kits in there would be a fun thing to do for her, um, for her sisters and her mom. And then you guys can have a jewelry making party. There you go. Um, so I cut the two pieces. I cut two eight inch pieces and I folded them in half and I threaded them through one of those large round jump rings, which was closed. Um, you do want to make sure that, that it's already closed. Got my um, fold of my cords threaded through there. What I'm doing is just a lark's head knot. So I've got it folded through. And then I'm going to thread the ends through the loop. You need to hold on to the jump ring so it doesn't pull all the way through and just lose the knot. That's a little bit tricky, but it can be done. And then I'm just pulling all those strands through. I'm kind of got that jump ring pinched between my finger and my thumb so I don't lose it. And then you've got um, a lark's head knot. Before you go forward, what you can do is come in here and just kind of straighten your strands and tidy them up and make them look how you want them to look. I've got one here that's got the back side of the, um, the suede lace showing, so I'm just flipping that over. Try and get the front side showing instead. Although really, it's a rustic design. It doesn't really matter that much. But it, still, here's where you... Uh, adjust everything to how you want it to look. There, got that one turned over. And then just pull that tight. This leather's a little bit springy, so it's going to bounce back. You can just keep kind of pulling on it and tightening it, and eventually it, it will kind of relax and and stay where you want it to. Another option is also to put a little bit of adhesive under the niece, underneath the front part of those wraps and just kind of glue the top of the knot to the rear strands. I'm not going to do that right now, but just know that that's an option if you want that, that knot to stay where you want it. All right, so now I need to find that opening of my jump ring and I'm gonna attach it to my button shank. And it's you need to pay attention to how you're putting it on the button so that the button is face up, you know, so that the, the little longhorn guy is, is not upside down. Uh, Trish is wondering if round leather or some thick cord would give this a great look too. Sure, I could imagine that. That could be very fun, um, just a round cord version. I, For some reason, I ended up really working um, with a lot of like the suede lace instead of the round cords for this, for this um, particular group of designs. I think just because they felt very, it felt very Western to me. 
but it would be fun to try this um, with like a 1.5 millimeter cord. You could probably do more strands and get a little more fringe. All right, so I, what I did was I opened that second jump ring and I threaded it through the shank above the first one. And I'm just opening that now and threading on a ear wire. And this could also be fun with the concho post we just used, but um, I really, really do like to let the button shine here. So I just I made the original design with the ear wire instead. Um, let's see. So that's that's the earring. Now we come to we what we want to do is thread one of the beads onto each of the strands. And that's why I cut it at a little sharp angle. And I may even give this a little twist. And then I can pick up one of the flower, the flower spacers. And just thread that on there until I can get a little bit poked through. Has to be enough where I can actually grab onto it. And I did find that giving this a little bit of a twist while I was doing this, almost like you were twisting it on, worked well to get it to slide up onto the lace. And then you can, I'm just gonna get them on there for now. Before I finish, then I'll adjust the placement of all of them. So you can see why I uh, trimmed the ends of these at the very sharp angle. Somebody is, is uh, I, I see that there's some um, conversation about using buttons like this as focals. And we actually have, oh, this one just does not want to slide. Um, we actually have quite a few projects on our website that uses buttons as focals like this. So if you go to um, the inspiration section, hold on, putting in a link. You will find uh, several pairs of earrings in there that use that use buttons as focals like this. I guess I like to do that. You know, if you use a button as a as a closure on the back of a necklace, that's certainly a good use for them, but you don't see it very much. Um, bracelets, you might see it a little more, but, get, but again, it's at the back. Oh, the link's not coming through. Hmm, are you, let's see. Wonder why I can't see any links. Facebook, you're, you're on Facebook, so they should be popping up in your feed. Um, Again, once again, if there are, is you guys have follow-up questions or anything like that, be sure and um, go to the website, I'm sorry, the TRCast Facebook page and send a message. I won't get back to you until I'm back in the office, um, which will be a couple of weeks. Um, but I, if you have questions or follow-up things about any of these projects, go ahead and send me a message and I'll get back to you when I'm back. And that includes if there's if there's links you missed or um, or uh, anything really, huh? All right. So the link I put in just now was tierracast.com slash inspiration slash. So that's, and you can find that very easily if you just go to the TRCast website. Um, it's right there at the top of the page. It's one of the tabs. This last one is being recalcitrant. Come on now. There we go. All right. So now I have... I have all my little beads on the on the lace and I'm going to adjust them, kind of adjust the placement, get them where I want them, aim the little flowers forward. 
and then I'll go in and kind of do final trimming of those of those little pieces of lace. And this is also where you could decide how long you want these uh, these earrings to be. You could trim these, leave them longer or trim them, you know, shorter. Designer's choice. And maybe a little bit more on that one. And slide your beads, you know, up and down, however you want them. That's looking pretty good, I think. So that is the Longhorn Fringe Earring Kit. And again, um, very beginner friendly. Um, pretty easy to put together. And that downloadable project sheet is available on our website. Or you can look for the kits, all three of these kits, at beadshop.com or at um, uh, allegory, allegory Gallery. And let's see, somebody had a question. If the beads don't, so those beads fit tight enough, you don't need knots. Yes, Brenda, with this, with this, um, this deerskin lace, um, we were talking a little bit about using maybe round cords. So that would be a consideration. You would need to make sure that, um, I'm switching my camera. You would need to make sure that your beads are gonna stay on um, whatever cord you use. And, you know, they that may involve, if it's a finer cord, you may have to tie a knot or something. But I love these. Matter of fact, I came without earrings today just for this reason. So I could use, put these earrings on. Um, thank you, you guys. Um, we got through all three kits just in an hour. So, um, yay. <laughs> didn't have to, uh, didn't have to feel rushed. They all went, the timing of them all went just fine. And I hope it all worked for you guys. Uh, somebody mentioned crimps. Uh, can't find it again something about crimping the beads. These ones, I guess you could crimp them, but I don't know if I would want to. You could use crimp covers if it was a thin enough cord, uh, 1.5 millimeter cord, you know, you might be able to stick a crimp cover over there. There are options. Part of jewelry design is um, engineering, I find. So, you know, th that's where the wonderful imagination comes in and finding solutions to all the stuff. So, um, thank you, you guys. The amazing Jamie from the Beat Gallery in Honolulu is up next. I'm not sure what she's got uh, on the schedule. Um, I'm trying to think if there's, it seemed like there was so much else I wanted to uh, mention or, or uh, you know, share with you guys. And it's all flying right out of my head. And, um, but thank you. And I hope you enjoyed these. And um, again, go to the inspiration se section of trcast.com. If you want to download the project sheets and work with supplies that you already have on hand and stay tuned for Jamie and hope you guys have enjoyed the Tucson 2022 version of the Great Beat Extravaganza. I know we've had a good time and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.